Writing is easy, said Ernest Hemingway. You just sit in front of the typewriter and bleed. Our culture's relationship with words is a contentious one. Writing, reading, comprehending language is the cornerstone of the law as well as legal practice, and yet, most people hate reading and writing. Lawyers work for days on a document that's either just glanced over enough to get to the signing pages or a part by a judge or opposing counsel. No matter the industry or vertical, there is a blend of nihilism and fear. Word creation. Who reads this crap anyway is side by side with, I hope they like it. I hope I said it right. Did I use that phrase correctly? And so, for the lawyer or wordsmith that loves words, sees them as an opportunity, an enigma to be solved, a chance to break through the black squiggles on the page and actually communicate through writing, there's a whole nother universe of not frustration, but freedom. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless uh Hi everyone, good evening. So our group will be discussing about capitalization, italics, boldface, and underscoring. First
Hi, I am Lexi. Now, for the continuation of the topic on capitalization, International Organizations Names of international organizations and agencies are capitalized. The following are the examples. United Nations General Assembly International Court of Justice Economic and Social Council or ECOSOC The following are ECOSOC agencies International Labor Organization United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization or UNESCO World Health Organization and United Nations Children's Fund or UNICEF As you can see in the given examples the first letter of each word or name is capitalized. Next, for executive and legislative bodies. The rule is, names of executive and legislative bodies, their derivative and short names, the names of their offices are capitalized. Examples, Republic of the Philippines. Office of the President Presidential Executive Assistant Congress of the Philippines Speaker of the House of Representatives Department of Budget and Management For judicial bodies, there are three things we need to take note. First, the Supreme Court and the word court Referring to it are capitalized. Examples are the following. Supreme Court of the Republic of the Philippines. Supreme Court and the Court. As you can see, the term court here is capitalized. Second, the names of international courts are capitalized. Examples, International Court of Justice. International Criminal Court and International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. And lastly, the names of the courts other than the Supreme Court are capitalized in legal documents but lowercased elsewhere. For the first example, the term Court of Appeals in pleadings and briefs should be capitalized. Now, look at the second example. She appealed to the Court of Appeals last year. Here, the term Court of Appeals is in lower case since it is used in non-legal document. However, it is subject to the exception that the court is capitalized when referring to a judge or branch where the case is pending. For example, this court holds the defendant in default. Now for historical events. Names of historical and cultural events and specific conferences, festivals, and games are capitalized. Examples, World War II, Athens Olympic, 2021 Miss Universe pageant, Earth Summit, Fourth World Conference on Women. Geographic names should also be capitalized. For example, names of oceans, lakes, rivers, mountains, islands, continents are capitalized, including the generic terms oceans, lakes, rivers, mountains and islands. Examples are the following, Sulu Sea, Manila Bay, and Mount Mayon. Exception, generic terms used in the plural after two or more geographic names are not capitalized. For example, Sulu and Philippine Seas. Here, you can see that the term seas is in lowercase after the two names Sulu and Philippines. Lingayen and Leyte Gulfs 
the two names are also capitalized, but the term gulfs is in lowercase. Second, landmarks, parks, monuments, buildings are capitalized. For example, Rizal Park and Quezon Memorial Circle. Third, popular nicknames of places are capitalized. Examples are the following, Queen City of the South and City of Pines. Fourth, geographic or administrative divisions and names of organized bodies are capitalized. Examples, Northern Hemisphere, Far East, Southeast Asia, and ASEAN. Titles of legal, literary, and artistic works are also capitalized. For legal works, examples are Philippine Constitution, Bill of Rights, Civil Code of the Philippines, and Rules of Courts. Second, for literary or artistic works, examples are the following. Hamlet, Sonnets from the Portuguese, and my favorite painting is the Mona Lisa. For the last example, notice that the term Mona Lisa is capitalized. Third, for titles of books, for example, Beyond Feelings, a guide to critical thinking was written by Professor Vincent R. Ruggiero. Next, brand names are capitalized. Examples are the following. Sprite, Shaokin, and Jollibee. Hi, Francis here, and we are still discussing capitalization rules. For number two, beginning of a sentence. The first letter of a sentence or a complete quotation is capitalized. The beginning of the headings are capitalized. The short and centered headings signaling the start of a main section are all capitalized. Example of direct quotation. Khalil Gibran said, Thou art my brother, because you are a human, we are equal and made of the same earth. So here, Notice that the first letter of the complete quotation, which is the word without, is capitalized. Direct quotation is not capitalized. Example, Khalil Gibran exhorted that human beings are brothers, equal and made of the same earth. Partial indirect quotations are not capitalized. Quotation following that are not capitalized. Let's take a look at the examples. You are my brother, Gibran said, because you are a human. The word you is not capitalized since this is a partial in the right quotation. Another example. Gibran said, you are my brother because you are a human. The word you is not capitalized because it followed the word that. Letter B. The beginning of direct questions are capitalized while indirect questions are not capitalized. Direct questions being sentences in themselves must be capitalized even though appearing within a sentence. They are usually preceded by a comma, a dash, and a colon. Examples The accused's expression seems to ask, Do I really deserve the sentence? Another example. I have to ask you a second time, where do you live? An indirect question is a declaratory statement which does not need a question mark or capitalized beginning of the question. Example, I have to ask you a second time, where you live? Number three rule, common nouns or adjectives forming part of a proper noun are capitalized. Here are the examples. Avenue. Jones Avenue, Park, Rizal Park, Dam, Angat and Pinagtabangan Dam, National, Philippine National Bank, City, 
Makati City. But the word city is not capitalized in City of Makati. Department Education and Defense Departments Number 4 A common noun used alone and representing a proper noun is capitalized. Examples Court Referring to the Supreme Court or any court hearing a particular case. Director Referring to a particular regional director. Mortgager, mortgagee. Seller, buyer. They are all capitalized once they are identified in a contract. Number five. Definite article the is capitalized when they part of an official name or title. Example, the cove versus CA. But the word the is lowered when not part of proper nouns, such as the Philippine Daily Inquirer, the Titanic, the Bureau of Emigration. Number six, particles and names. Particles and names such as the, del, dela, van, or von are capitalized due to usage or are preceded by a forename or title. Examples, de la Victoria. The word de or de la are not capitalized through usage. Another example, del vale or not capitalized del vale because of usage. Now let's proceed to italization rules. Italics are used to emphasize parts of a sentence or to indicate that the word italicized is referred to as such word without reference to its meaning. Example, students are required to submit their papers online. The italicized word is used for emphasis. Italics are likewise used in introducing unfamiliar words or foreign phrases not yet incorporated in English. Examples, alopecia or baldness is rare among Filipinos than whites. Another example, ora et labora, meaning prayer and work, is a Benedictine motto. For the next topic, underlining. Like bold facing and italicizing, underlining or sometimes called underscoring can be used to emphasize certain words and phrases as to attract the reader's attention to these words as well as to distinguish them from other words in the text. In order, however, to not confuse the reader, particularly when one decides to also use boldface and italics in his writing for the same purpose, it is perhaps better to limit underlining to certain applications. First, as an alternative to italicizing, Underline titles of books, magazines, films, television shows, and radio programs. Examples are provided below. When one has however decided to underline or italicize titles, he needs to consistently apply the same way when citing titles in the rest of his written document. Second, Underline or italicize names of famous vehicles. Examples, BRP Ang Pangulo and Challenger. Brand names of cars are not however underlined nor italicized. Third, underline headings in a document as an alternative to bold facing them to differentiate them from the regular text. Fourth, underline word or phrase in a sentence that you wish to emphasize when reading the sentence aloud or when you wish to highlight them in a document. For example, my client, your honor, is in fact the victim of injustice here. The word victim is highlighted to emphasize the standing of the client.
Now, I'm going to discuss to you bold facing. Good evening everyone, as you can recall, Group 4 discussed about affectations. What we will now discuss is the legal affectations that we need to avoid. To define, affectation in writing is the use of words that are pretentious and meant to impress. The problem with this type of writing is it sounds pompous and artificial. This may be because the intention is to sound legal or official, when in fact, the opposite is true. For while the writing sounds authoritative, the authority is pegged only on trivial matters. What we need to remember is that the strength of legal writing is in its clarity and on how it musters its argument, not on the number of legalese or presence of unnecessary and pompous words. There are three legal affectations that we need to avoid. Number one, above and below. Number two, archaic words. And number three, double negative. Let's look at the example for number 1. Paragraph 2 above states, and clause 7 below. From the examples given, we can see that the terms above and below are unnecessary. So instead, we say, paragraph 2 states, and clause 7 of paragraph 5 mentions. Number 2 are cake words such as hereafter, hereinafter, heretofore, thereto, said, aforesaid, aforementioned, whereupon, thereupon, wherein, and wherefore, are vestigial remnants of a bygone era. They were probably useful in the past but have since lost their utility in the modern legal usage. They must never be used, not so much because of their antiquity, but they are unnecessary. In the example, the Mountain Bikers Association of Baguio, herein after the association, owns a lot at. Instead, we say, the Mountain Bikers Association of Baguio City, enclosed in the parenthesis the association, owns a lot at. Number three, we need to avoid or minimize the use of a double negative. A double negative happens when two negative words are used together in a sentence. If the two negative words are referring to the same thing, the effect is to cancel each other out. A common objection against the use of double negative in legal writing is they make communication circuitous and confusing. It is best to avoid using them to achieve simplicity and clarity in writing. The common double negative expressions are as follows. No fewer than, we say, at least has not yet attained, we say, is under, may not until, we say instead, may only when, 
is not unless we say is only if not void we say valid or legal not insufficient we say enough or sufficient not disallowed or any other this words we say allowed and not unlawful or any other unwords we say instead lawful we should also remember that double negatives in a sentence require mental calisthenics switching from no to yes consequently the message is not immediately clear for example no field trips may be done by any class in the absence of the written consent by the student's parents or guardians. We write instead, written consent of the student's parents or guardian is required before any field trip may be done by any class. Our next and final topic is about legal citations. First, what is Citation. Citation is the practice of referring to or crediting these authoritative documents and sources you have used. It is a way of telling your audience that the materials you have presented does not belong to you. You are merely using them since it may um, strengthen your stance or you feel that it is necessary for your audience to properly understand the topic you have been presenting. How about legal citations? Basically, it is citing these legal documents that you have used. These legal documents can be the constitutions, jurisprudence or decisions by the Supreme Court, rules, ordinances, statutes, um, writings or um, academic writings of these legal scholars, treaties, etc. Most legal citations consist of the name of the document, abbreviation of the legal series, and the date. Now next, these are suggested um, guides in citing your legal documents, the purpose of which is so that you can properly, again, cite these documents because it is necessary for, for lawyers to do so. First, how can you cite a constitution? The um, sort of template would be the abbreviation for constitution, an abbreviation. It's C-O-N-S-T dot comma, the article, section, or paragraph number you could be referring to. You do not you did not put the year of the constitution if the one you're citing is is the one that is currently in force since this would be the assumption that this is the constitution you are citing. If it is not, if you're citing one that is not currently in force, an old constitution, you simply have to put the year after the word const. So the example here would be um for our 1973 constitution, you're going to cite article 2, you put cons. open close parenthesis, 1973, article 2. If now you're citing a constitution of another country, you simply now just have to put the name of the country before the word constitution. So, example, Japan, cons. article 4, section 3. What if you're now citing codes and laws? The you put the title of the code and then the article section you would be referring to and then the year if applicable. Sample, you're gonna cite a family code. You put family code, comma, article 38, part 1. You can, if you're citing this this entire law and it has a long title, you, act, you have to put the entire title. Example here would be an act defining violence against women and their children, providing for protective measures for victims, providing penalties, therefore, and for other purposes. And then the nomenclature and then the number, Republic Act 9262, Section 3, and then the year. With open close parenthesis, 2004. For the next part of the document you're presenting, you do not need to cite the, this and this entirely again. Now you now just have to put RA9263, Section 3, if you're referring to Section 3. Because it would be very lengthy to again mention the entire law when you have already mentioned it before. So next, for cases. When citing cases, you put the party names. The party names is condensed usually into their into the surnames. Example here would be Coroda versus Holandoni. The their entire name is not is not placed and only their surnames. When you're citing these cases, you put example, the third example here would be Crowder versus Salandoni, and then the 
case ID or address 83 Phil 171 and then the year 1949. In directly, if you cite this case again directly, sub succeeding, succeeding when you cited it before, you just have to put the ID number, ID at 171. And then again, when you have to cite it once more, but it would it is not directly succeeding uh, succeeding citation, you have to put Kuroda and then the address that you fill at 171. You do not to need to mention the entire citation again, much like the one with the with the law, you do not have to put the entire title because it would be very lengthy. It would be lengthy. Now for advanced sheets, um, generally used only when the reported versions are not published yet. It, you would put this example, the first example, People versus Henosa, the GR number 135981 and the date July 15, 2004. For cases under the, court, um, under the Court of Appeals, you put the open and close parenthesis Court of, court of Appeals and then the year, nine, example, uh, 1996. You put here, People versus Corrientes, 37 OG, 1804, open and close parenthesis Court of Appeals and then you actually have to put the year. I'm sorry for not being able to put it in the slides. You have to put the year after the word part of the phrase card. Card of Appeals. Then, how about citing books? You have to put the author. When you're citing the author's name, put the initial, their initials, period, and then their surnames. And then the title, edition if applicable, place of publication, publisher, year of publication, pinpoint if needed. Again. Example here, if you are, you're were citing a civil law reviewer, page 900, and then the reviewer was made in 2004, you put E. Albano, E. Albano Jr., M. Albano, civil law reviewer, 900, 2004. If, if for example, again, we're citing the, the legal writing book we're using about um, legal citation, you put um, G. Tabucanon and D. Macon. Comma, legal writing, a competency based approach, then 231 to 232, and then um, open and close parenthesis 2018. That's how you cite books. Finally, how do you cite internet sources? You simply have to put the exact web, web address and the date you have visited this site. Example, um, you researched the meaning of quasi legislative and you came upon this website, the Legal Information Institute, it would actually be helpful to put the name of the website you are citing. The citation would be Legal Information Institute, comma, the web address that you have copied and then the date of visit, 2021, or you could be more exact, put November 20, 2021.